Hi, welcome to Coffee Break with Researchers. Today, I'm having a coffee break with Harriet Balkley from Durham University. She is the project coordinator of the Naturbation project. Coffee Break with Researchers presents you with unique insights from the world of academia and higher education. In this series, we have conversations with team members of the Naturevation project, funded by the European Union's Horizon 2020 program. Coffee Break with Researchers makes scientific knowledge accessible to all. Harriet, thank you very much for accepting this invitation to have a coffee break with me. How are you doing? Great, thank you, and nice to see you this morning. I uh, hope everything's well with you in Vienna. Thank you, it's doing great. And um, today I'm having a black coffee from Costa Rica. Which one are you having? I'm also having a black coffee. I think mine is from Colombia though, so nearby, uh, but uh, not exactly the same. Wow, I love Colombian coffee. And uh, Harriet, I want to talk with you about uh, the Naturevation project and nature-based solutions. Could you please tell me what is exactly uh, Naturevation project and what is it about? Well, the, the Naturevation project has been running for four years and uh, we're a really big and diverse group of people. So we're doing all sorts of different things about nature-based solutions. Uh, and we can think about nature-based solutions as different ways we use and bring nature into our cities. Uh, it can be anything from uh, letting the verges grow with wildflowers on the roads, so making space for pollinators like bees, or just like you see on my coffee mug actually, I've got, I'm a bit of a, a bee addict actually, so I always tend to tend towards the bees when we're talking about nature-based solutions. Or ways in which we can um, you know, work with seagrass to help uh, stabilise coasts and uh, generate new uh, ecosystems coastal cities, uh, something that some of our colleagues up in Newcastle are experimenting with at the moment. All sorts of just uh, different things that we've been doing, trying to understand how we can bring more nature into our cities and, and what that means for the societies that we live in. And uh, can you give us an example of a nature-based solutions in, in your city, in, in Newcastle? Well, yeah, I mean, living in Durham, which is just a small city outside of Newcastle, there's plenty of nature here already. Uh, we have a, a historic cathedral, which has a, a nature reserve around it. So here we can see nature as part of the heritage and our cultural heritage in this area. It's very important to us, the, the river and the woods is part of what it means to belong to Durham. So we can see nature as part of people's identity and sense of belonging to a place. Um, but up the road in Newcastle, where we're working with uh, colleagues in the Environment Agency and in the City Council there, we can see lots of uh, new kinds of nature-based solutions being tried. So uh, along the river, the Tyne River, it's quite a famous river in the UK, uh, the Environment Agency are working with nature-based solutions to try and clean the quality of the water in the river, to generate new ecosystems. Um, they using nature-based solutions, working with partners across the city to reduce flood risk. So you can put nature-based solutions in across the city and they can help retain the water uh, in parks or in ponds or in just small little uh, gullies where you can uh, plant new ecosystems and then that can help slow the water coming into the city. And Newcastle has had quite a history of flooding and so Many of the actors in the city are really interested in working with nature so that we can prevent those kind of risks happening in the future. Mm, it sounds like it's a great place to, to be working on a project such as Naturevation. So can you tell us something about the, the people in work, uh, that work on the project or uh, how do you find this collaboration possible? Yeah, well, we're working in all sorts of different forms of collaboration. So we have scientists and social scientists in the project. So one of the forms of collaboration that we have is by bringing together our knowledge about the natural world from the science community with those of us, like myself, who's got more of a background in social science, trying to understand questions of governance and business models and how do we get people involved in developing nature-based solutions. And another form of the collaboration that we've been doing is working with a whole set of practitioners and policy makers in city councils in six different cities across Europe, including our friends up in Newcastle, but also in Utrecht and in Malmo and in Gior, in Barcelona, in Leipzig, uh, to work together to understand what 
practitioners who are trying to make these solutions work on the ground? What do they really need to understand from us as research as a research community? You know, what what is it that is actually useful knowledge for them on a day to day basis? So that's been another important part of the collaboration we've been doing. So thinking of the actors and all these people that you, you say are involved in the project, what do you think are the key insights or lessons that, that we can take from the project? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. And when you've been working with a team of, uh, you know, nearly 80 people over 14 institutions for four years, you generate so much knowledge that sometimes it's a bit tricky to see the the wood for the trees, as it were. But we're really at that stage of the project now where we're really kind of bringing together those key insights. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think one of them is, um, is just the importance of, of really proper assessment of nature-based solutions. We think about nature-based solutions as interventions that can deliver um, environmental services, economic benefits and social benefits as well. And that is true, they can do that. But actually there are quite a lot of trade-offs between those different things that they can deliver. So nature-based solutions that might be really great for climate change might not always deliver for biodiversity or for social justice. And so it's about assessing them in a way that you can see what their benefits are, but also recognize the trade-offs. And we've developed a new tool, which we call the Naturevation Navigator to help um, communities and policymakers who are doing that kind of assessment look at multiple criteria um, using lots of different indicators to try and assess nature-based solutions. And so I think that's one of the key things that we've learned is it's important to recognize that nature-based solutions give you lots of benefits, but not to just take that um, uh, you know, for granted, but to really look at what they actually are. So that's been important. A second um, key thing is that we've been looking at is, you know, what makes a nature-based solution successful on the ground? You know, why do some of them take root and grow and thrive and become, you know, part of the city in a way that, you know, in the end, you just end up taking it for granted that they're there already? And why do some others struggle? Um, so we've been looking at the importance of involving communities from the outset in doing that. We've been looking at the importance of developing the right kinds of business models um, and governance frameworks through which nature-based solutions can really grow. So yeah, so we're, we're looking at that. What, what are the ingredients for success, I guess? And maybe there are two key things there to really draw out. Um, one of them is about money. And at the end of the day, you know, how do we finance nature-based solutions? Who's gonna pay for them? Um, which are the actors that are gonna to stand to gain the most from them? And how can we get those actors involved? Uh, so some of our colleagues across the project have been working with um, the insurance sector, with the banking sector, um, thinking about how do you bring together different kinds of financial interest in nature-based solution and weave together some new kinds of arrangements through which you can finance them. But a second really important finding for us, I think, is that nature-based solutions can really bring benefits, but those benefits are not always equally shared. So some communities really gain from those nature-based solutions, while others might not have the access to the benefits that they create. Um, and particularly, I guess, in the, you know, what we've seen over the time of the pandemic and as people have really needed access to urban nature in their own cities and their communities, it's going to be more important than ever to make sure that that access is equal, right? So that, you know, that's another key part of what we've been looking at is how can we improve those issues around social justice and nature-based solutions. So, that, I think, is another key part of what we found. Oh, this uh, is definitely an, an impressive project and such a great initiative, I imagine, very challenging. And I imagine that uh, these topics are going to be discussed. So what can you say about the Naturevation Conference unlocking the, the potential of nature-based solutions? Yeah, I mean, like many things, I think, this year, it's not exactly as we planned it to be. Uh, you know, we had wanted to get people together to share experiences, uh, you know, face to face. We're also used to doing our, our learning that way, aren't we? But with this, uh, you know, with this current crisis also comes opportunities, right? And so, you know, what we've decided to do with our end of project conference, which is bringing together four years worth of our findings, is really to open it up to really to a global audience. Um, so we've got speakers who are going to be coming from Australia through to North America um, and through to South America as well. We're all going to be sharing 
their experiences of working with nature-based solutions um, over the last four years. So we're looking at the core themes that Naturevation have been following and bringing our insights together with that of our partners in this wider global community to discuss you know, really where are we with nature-based solutions so far? We've had sort of five years worth of, of research and excitement and policy kind of drive to implement nature-based solutions in cities. And what have we collectively learned? So it's about sharing our own findings, but doing that with this whole you know, global range of partners that we're bringing together for this event. Um, so I hope it will be, you know, a time for us to learn as well. I mean, you know, we are at the end, nearly the end of our project, but I'm, I'm always thinking that there's more to learn here. So we want it to be an exchange uh, with, our, with our colleagues who are joining us to present and discuss, but also, of course, with all the participants that we're hoping will join us online for the day. I'm sure it will be great. And those are all my questions, Harriet. Thank you so much uh, for everything you have done to the project. It's great to hear. And we wish you all the best also for your future projects and hope to see you soon in a coffee break. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye now. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in more details about this project, you can find the link here below. See you next time. Bye bye.